If you've ever needed to sing for longer than five minutes at a time, you know how important vocal efficiency is. But you don't need to sing four sets a night, five nights a week to benefit from singing techniques that help you to sing longer and stronger. Today's topic is so important to every modern vocalist that it's one of the very first things I teach a student singer. What is it? Let's find out. Sound check. Check one, check two. Hello everyone, welcome back to Voice Essentials. If you're new here, g'day, my name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist. It's my great privilege in life to help you realize the full potential of your singing voice. Today, we are going to be learning about the all important skill of vocal twang. I've talked about the techniques of twang before, but today I wanna to go a step further and give you some excellent exercises designed to help you achieve your best vocal twang ever. But first, what is twang? Well, the term twang was first used by Joe Estill, the founder of the Estill Method. In the Estill Method, twang is a voice quality distinguished by its bright, brassy tonality. Gillian Kay is a singing voice specialist based in the UK, further qualifies twang as being characterized by a tightened areopiglottic sphincter with high larynx and tongue. The thyroid can be tilted or neutral, allowing for a thinner or thicker vocal fold mass. The tightening of the areopiglottis tends to increase resistance in the vocal folds, so it is important not to drive breath in this voice quality. Okay, so let's unpack some of those big words. The areopiglottic sphincter is the muscle that runs around the edge of the epiglottis, a leaf-shaped cartilage that sits above your trachea, and it's kind of like a trapdoor that protects the opening of your larynx and down into your lungs. The areopiglottic sphincter, what many vocal pedagogues affectionately refer to as the twanger, has the ability to bring the epiglottis into a halfway close. When, when the twanger is half closed, it creates a narrowing of the space immediately above the vocal folds. And it's in this space that the clear focused resonance of twang is added into the sound. Sound check. I mentioned earlier that twang is one of the most important foundational skills a student singer can learn because it helps to create vocal track shapes that are highly efficient. The efficiency of twang is so high that research has shown that some users of twang can achieve up to 600% more volume with no extra effort. Now that's some payoff, but for most contemporary singers who use microphones, an increase of 600% is completely unnecessary because our volume, for the most part, is primarily reinforced by amplification. So let's just say we're happy to settle for 300% increase. Well, on a scale of efficiency, you can learn to reduce your effort below your original baseline of output. Essentially, the clear focused resonance of twang helps your voice to work smarter not harder. Now you may have noted in the Gillian Kay's quote we read earlier that a key attribute of twang is the necessary reduction of air pressure flowing through the larynx. In fact, during the early 2000s, many singing teachers shunned twang because their student voices were constricting with twang activities. The cause of constriction in twang is not the mechanical configuration of twang, but moreover, the inability of the student singer to intentionally reduce the air pressure to a significantly lesser flow rate. So as we step through the two twang exercises I've got for you today, I want you to continuously monitor your sense of air pressure. And with the reduction of air pressure comes a decrease in physical sensation, what we call kinesthetic awareness. Now, in fact, you may even feel like you're not using enough air. If this is you, good. Twang should feel easy and balanced in the throat, not tight and constricted. Also, one last thing before we start the activities. Twang is not nasality. Let me say it again. Twang is not nasality. It's added to the sound before the choice is made as to whether the sound will be directed through your nasal cavity or through the mouth. And herein lays another big benefit of twang. You can shape the tonality of twang. Nasal sounds are fixed because you can't actually alter the shape of your nasal cavity. But because the clear focused resonance of twang can travel through the mouth, 
it is able to be further developed by the flexible spaces of the pharynx and oral cavity. So with all of this in mind, let's get into the exercises, but before we start, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button if you're looking forward to practically using your twanger. Sound check. One of the common denominators in both of today's twang exercises is the use of an NG sound, as in mmm. The reason we use NG is that voice science has taught us that when we produce an NG sound, it activates the aryepiglottic sphincter, the twanger. So you don't have to do much more than apply the right amount of air pressure to the NG and you're away. The first activity uses the NG sound across a simple three note scale, like this. Sing. Let's do it together starting on a D3. Ladies, you can start an octave higher or maybe on a C4. Up there, sing. Remember not to push too much air pressure through the sound. Let's do a few of those together, guys. We're back down here on a D, uh, D3. Sing. Sing. Don't push. Sing. Keep everything nice and balanced. Sing. Sing. Couple more. Sing. Sing. Did you notice that as we traveled high in your range that there was a temptation to push harder? Again, resist that temptation and keep the pressure even and balanced. Now, if you're looking for a fun backing to work with, you can download the exercise track on my training CD, Dr. Dan's Voice Essentials, from my website. I've left a link in the description section below. You can also use the link that just popped up onto the screen up there. Now, let's look at the second exercise. And heads up, this one's slightly more unusual. Let me do it for you as a complete sentence and then we'll break into it in bite-sized pieces. Have a listen. I'll start it on a, an F3. Sing. Okay. So let's break it into bite-sized pieces to start. Just have a listen to it with an NG followed by the single vowel. Sing. You can hear the clear focused resonance of the twang continuing through the center of the vowel, which is predominantly running through my mouth. I'm using the NG to activate the twanger and to get that core resonance that then is maintained through the vowel. Have a listen to the rest of the vowels and listen for that clear focused resonance through the core of the tone. Sing a, sing a, sing a, sing a, sing a. Now notice on the O and the U, I'm shaping my lips forward like the bell of a trumpet. Sing, oh, sing, oh. Another thing to notice is that on the E and the I vowel, I'm having to adjust my, pressure, um, my, my air pressure ever so more slightly just to ensure that it doesn't want to constrict because the E and the I are far more narrow than the other vowel shapes. So let's do a few of them together. I'm going to start. Um, you'll at home, you'll go through them individually in, uh, as like I just did, but then with the exercise CD, should you choose to download the track, you put it into a sentence and the sentence again sounds like this. What we're going to do is do a single semi, a single tone, then we're going to go up in a few steps in semitones and then uh, we'll continue. So we'll go sing more 
Oh, did you hear on that? Oh, just on that one, I got a little bit of a uh, sound in there. That was because I didn't adjust correctly for the air pressure, and so I got a little bit of a constricted tone there. I want you to avoid that, and in my practice, I'm obviously going to go back and work on that particular vowel shape. As always, learning twang and the air pressure balance required for good, healthy twang takes time to develop. So be sure to practice the activities regularly as a part of your overall vocal development. I cannot stress enough how important twang is to the contemporary singer. So please make sure you work the skill into your voice for the full benefits of a clear focused resonance. I hope you've enjoyed our technical workout today. If you're new to Voice Essentials then please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. I release new videos every week designed to develop your voice and improve your sound and I would love for you to join our ever-growing community of singers from across the globe who just like you want to realize the full potential of their singing voice. I'll see you in the next Voice Essentials video. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.